Hello, Yeshua Network, and welcome to the entire Bible read through. I'm hey. Alex Lavovsky, and with us is, of course, Nathan Wheeler. The other guy. <laughs> We're blessed to be with you. We're super thrilled to be with you again. Another Sunday. We are together. What a blessing, you guys. We are blessed by you guys, too. Hallelujah. All right. Hey, uh, welcome. If you guys don't know, it says Jeremiah 1 through 10 again. Uh, that's because we did uh, some passages or we did some chapters last week, but we got so uh, wonderfully filled with comments that it took a while and we don't want to rush this. So uh, we are picking up where we left off. No general comments to kick off, except to say at Yeshua Network, we have started a new thing this week. We hope that you will participate in it. It is called the 40 Day Holiness Challenge. I believe it's going to be a massive blessing. It's a massive blessing to me already. Um, and I honestly wish I had it when, when I was when I was just starting out. Uh, I know a lot of people who are seasoned believers. Uh, you know, they know these things already. But especially for those who are new, I just pray that uh, that the forty day challenge will be a blessing to you. So go check that out. And also, we have another new thing. We have a new group called Yeshua Meetups. So if you go Yeshua Facebook dot com forward slash groups Yeshua Meetups with an S on the end. Uh, you will see all the meetups, pictures and posts uh, from the people who attend. You can reconnect with the people you meet up with at the meetups, and you can stay in touch, and you can learn more about the meetups coming. There's so much going on at Yeshua Network. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more because <laughs> we're already doing a thousand bazillion wonderful things that the Lord is allowing us to do, we add more to the, more to the plate because Yehovah is amazing and because there's more and more people, by the way, we're stepping up their game here at Yeshua Network at this certain season. And, uh, and, and and no matter when you're watching this video, I pray that you will go to the Facebook page, Yeshua Official. I pray that you will plug into the body of Christ and the fellowships we have there. And also, hopefully, when you see this recorded, you go to YeshuaNetwork.com. And there will be an amazing uh, website there where you can plug in and fellowship and see all the tools and all the videos and all the posts that we do as well there. That is coming very soon if you're watching this live. Hopefully that is already around when you watch it recorded. So praise the Lord for that. I think that is enough of the pre jibber jabber. Mr. Lavosky, would you very... like to back up where we left off? Sure. That's very good jibber jabber. Uh, I am excited about all the wonderful things. And uh, yeah, guys, walking in holiness is a is a big deal. So I think I'm super stoked that Nathan is doing this, uh, started doing this series, and uh, I think it's going to be a huge blessing for me. I think it's going to be a huge blessing for all of us, you guys. So uh, um, I'll just leave it at that, and then let's read. Uh, Karen Dell Cunningham. Um, this is so we got to Jeremiah four. And uh, we we read Rudy Barlon's uh, uh, comment here about on Jeremiah four three, and the next one is by Karen. Um, Karen Dell Cunningham, plow your uncultivated ground for a season, and do not sh sow among thorns. Circumcise, dedicate, and sanctify yourselves to the Lord, and remove the foreskins of your heart. Jeremiah four three amplified. So there's like some amplified stuff. So. Plow your uncul uncultivated ground, and then brackets for a season, and then circumcise has got brackets, dedicate and sanctify, and then re and remove the foreskin, you got sins in brackets. So I think that's... So at the mention of sowing among thorns, I immediately thought of the parable of the sower and seeds, where the thorns represent the cares and the worries of this life, distractions, and the superficial pleasures and delights of having stuff, also distractions. Even though I loved the Lord from a... From a child, I've grown up in a rich environment of the of the word, with preachers and teachers serving it up on a platter. The Lord showed me that the soil of my heart had a lot of thorns, choking out any passion to read and study the scriptures for myself. And those other seemingly innocent, benign pleasures, activities, and concerns were becoming little gods I was serving. I'm so grateful He led me to this EBRT and motivated me to start plowing and pulling out the thorns that were distracting me from seeking him with my whole heart. Sadly, I see many loved ones now, professed believers, not interested in reading the whole scripture, the whole of scripture, so distracted with their initial love and passion for God choked out by thorns. So my question is, what do you feel it means to, quote, 
N not so among thorns. Hmm. That's a great comment. Great question. Uh, you gotta, you wanna, you wanna get some thoughts on that? Sure. I have perceived through my walk going to many, many churches, physical churches, not with the desire to judge them, but I went with the desire to be fed. Uh, I went to three churches a week for, I think, two and a half years, two years. It was a long time. Uh, uh, three new churches a week, not the same three churches a week, uh, seeking a one that's, that, did the, did the, that was in the truth, as, as I read in the Bible. And uh, all I'm saying is, is that, you know, they serve their purpose. Uh, there are many of us who have, uh, I don't, but there are many people who have a building, a church, if you will, a congregation, a denomination that they associate with, and it blesses them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for it serves you. If it brings you closer to God and it brings you closer in your relationship. But, uh, but you know, I always say don't try to project your convictions onto other believers because where they are at in their walk is, is not where you're at in your walk. And everybody is at a different level. And, and everything is kind of like a Chinese menu. If you don't know what that term means, that, that slang means, it means, you know, you can get rice and chicken, rice and beef, rice and broccoli. You get to pick and choose what your combination of, 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 of convictions are. The Holy Spirit really is the one that does it. But you get a combination of convictions that are very different in the infinite combinations of every other soul on earth. So so do not sow among thorns. You know, if if people say I'm right, I'm good where I'm at, I know best, let them be there. And if people say I don't care, I don't need God, let them be there. The only thing that we can do is we can inspire. We can walk our walk. We can sow our energy in our time into good soil. We can do what the Lord has commanded us to do, which is what EBRT, the 40-day 40 challenge, 40 challenge, the uh, fellowship, the meetups are all, you know, in line with, with taking commandment from the Lord and responding to it. And if people say, I don't need that, then bless them. Don't curse them. Don't wish any ill on them. Bless them, but just continue to do what you do and continue to be an inspiration. And uh, that may not mean that you give your energy or your fellowship uh, to those to those avenues or those people or those churches or whatever. But that but but at no time I just want to add this in, which is why I'm even giving this comment. At no time should we ever condemn, or should we ever wish ill, or ever say, "Well, then you're gonna, you know, miss out," or "Well, you're gonna da da da," and place some kind of like judgment anchor on. Them. Right. If, if we should do anything, we should just pray for them to have an awakening if there needs to be one as the Holy Spirit wills it, as the Holy Spirit deems is good for them, because what is good for us isn't always good for somebody else. So uh, that's my two cents on do not sow among thorns. Don't don't sow among thorns, but also don't don't necessarily be the one whose job it is to light those thorns on fire and burn them. You know, because you never know when a thorn might be transformed into a seed uh, by the will and grace of God. For I was once a thorn, and he transformed me into a seed. So, yeah, that's it. You got anything to add, brother? Yeah, no, I, I think that was great. Um, I'm in agreement with you. Um, there's going to be people in your lives who's, who are your loved ones, people very close to you. Um um, and their responses are going to sometimes feel very thorny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously, the wrong thing to do in that in situation is to excommunicate them from your life or from even the conversations of God. But you need, you, you know, you could always find a balance, you could try to find a balance of where you continue doing your thing, you continue walking with the Lord, you continue having faith, and they will see you doing it. And it's gonna have an effect. When you when you come at them, you will get thorns. But when you leave them alone, do you think they really want to hold on to their thorns, or are they going to be like, "What is going on there?" Mm -hmm. You know, just just a, just a something. You know, because all of us, I think, all of us will get invested in wanting our friends and our loved ones and our relatives to get on board with Jehovah. I mean, of course we do. Like, who doesn't, right? If you find a great new uh, you know, business or deal or some well of never ending, 
you know, gold, you're going to want to share it with the people you love. Well, Jehovah is that thing for sure. So it's understandable that you want to share. It's good. But anyway, I hope this tickly helps. Nose. Huh? I had a tickly nose. Tickly today. nose. I'm getting a tickly nose. Woo! I'm glad you have one too. I don't feel yeah. alone. Sorry, go ahead. That's no, I, you know, I'm just saying that, that it's, it's, uh, it feels thorny sometimes to sow among those, the people you, that you love. And yes. um, what my brother said is very important. There's going to be times where you're going to want to press the eject button on people. Um, but, you know, having grace and remembering that at some point you were very much a thorn yourself and somebody came into your life that didn't press the eject button. And what an am amazing experience that allowed you to have, right? And again, of course, God is really the one controlling all of it. We get to participate, but you know, I just, just, just to kind of, just to kind of piggyback and, you know, yes. on what and, you were saying. And my brother, just, just so there's no confusion too, I agree with my brother, and then hopefully, I, I was also clear that don't give up on them. Yes meaning don't stop loving them and don't yes. stop being you and walking in your path, which may be an inspiration onto them because they're going to see it. They're going to see the fruits of the blessing onto you. But at the same time, don't cast your pearls to swine. If somebody doesn't want your blessings, if somebody, I have an eyelash in my eye, if somebody doesn't want your blessings, if somebody isn't of your conviction is what I was trying to say with the Chinese yes. man thing. If they're not of your conviction, let them not be of your conviction. That's None of us are convicted because of another human being yeah. telling us we must be convicted. None of us are. We are only ever convicted because the Holy Spirit convicts us. And so don't cast your pearls to swine. If the Lord has you on a path, walk that path. And I promise you that the Lord will bring the brothers and sisters in spirit, in Yeshua, onto your path who will be walking it with you, right? Right. And if your own brothers, your own sisters, your own family, your own friends, your own community, your own church building people are not on that path, that's okay. And that's what I was meaning, is it means don't cast your pearls to swine. Don't also shove your pearls down swine's throats, right? So, and and the swine thing is, is I, I just want to say, just because somebody isn't on the same path as you or on the same convictions doesn't mean they are swine. But according to the analogies, biblically, don't cast your pearls to swine means people who aren't of the same conviction, not equally yoked, right? Uh, most likely in that term, it's non-believers, but not uh, not so among thorns, same thing. You know, it may be non-believers, but it may also be people who think that they're right and aren't on the right path. But that's not really us to decide of where a person is on the path to God. Some of us need to go all the way into Satanism or all the way into New Ageism before we can come back to Christ and be the prodigal sons that we are meant to be. And we have to have that faith that God is going to do that work in them, right? That's, that's This is the hard part. So uh, I hope I'm giving both sides of the coin. Don't abandon them with your love, but also don't shove your pearls down their throat, right? So it's it's a balance, but let it all be surrendered over to God and trust that both results will be accomplished when you simply walk your walk. Hope that all is very clear. There's a there's a real a uh, real time comment right now that that is, you know, proving to us yet again that uh, the Lord is working uh, through all of this. And he said uh, here, uh, Maria Dustin, thank you for your comment. Is saying, I swear the Lord has. I swear the Lord had me come across this video intentionally. I needed to hear this, and a lot of people around me and close to me don't have my beliefs. I've been focused on my faith and trusting Him. Um, praying for every single person. Amen, Maria. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you know, I mean, come on. Uh, Ricardo is saying, what about the parables of the seeds, the one who falls among thorns? That's what we're responding to, uh, Ricardo. I don't know if you're if you're late, but that's what Karen was asking. That's the actual question that we're responding to. So we're saying that, you know, don't sow your seeds. Uh, you know, don't put your energy, don't don't put your seeds among the people who don't want them. If people are demonstrating they're not on the same path, on the same convictions, and and wanting to uh, to walk in the same, you know, read the entire Bible, serve, you know, yada yada, so and so forth. Don't do it. There's you don't, you don't always need to be the person who brings that person to enlightenment. 
You don't need to be the vessel for every single person in the world to come to the same enlightenment you might have come to. There can be another person in the world at another time and place that the Lord could use them to bring that person that you love, you care for, and you know into the enlightenment that they need to. Yeah. All we need to do is continue to walk our own, continue to be our blessing. And and so that's that. I know it's kind of complicated because it's a double-edged sword, right? It's the whole don't don't judge them, but also don't sow your seeds among them, right? So it's, it's a very a balanced thing. And uh, either way, you can get caught in the pride trap. You can get caught in the pride trap being, well, then fine, I'm better than you. I'm not going to sow my seeds among you. Or you could get caught in the pride trap of, I'm better than you. I know more. I need to convince you. Both can be bad. If you are truly humble and you truly trust in the same Holy Spirit that brings you into enlightenment and knowledge and motivates you to read the entire Bible is the same Holy Spirit that's going to do that for them, then you will just stay your course and you will use him as your northern star and you will put your ship in that direction. And as you fail to victory, the people who witnessed your victory and your growth will say, I want that. And then they will say, how do I get that? And it may be that they can never eat from your plate. A prophet is not accepted in its own country, right? So so that's okay. It's okay if it's not you. It will always only ever be the Holy Spirit anyways. Hope this, uh, I know we're repeating yourself, putting it in different ways, but responding to the comments I'm seeing yeah. popping up as well. Uh, it just made me really quick think of the analogy that you've brought up a lot, Nathan, about you know farming being an absolutely perfect analogy to everything. And, and what I mean by that is like, it's trying to talk to a plant to trying to convince a plant to grow faster, like by talking to it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it almost as if when, when interacting with a, a believer, non-believer, whatever, you know, when, when, when a seed or some sort of nudge or something comes out, a, a, a testimony, something comes from you and it hits them and it bounces right off or it completely misses or a thorn comes your way, it's as if you walked to, up to a plant and you looked at it and you saw, oh, it's not ready yet to be harvested or, oh, the the fruit's still not ripe enough to pull from the vine or, oh, it's still just a, you know, it's a little, it's just budding. It's not yet a full grown plant. Yeah. You don't get mad at the plant and say, you shall, I'm going to pluck you out now because you've, you've not grown enough. No, you walk away mm -hmm. and wait until another time. Mm -hmm. and, and that's and you, basically. And you, and you trust that the sunlight and the soil and yes. the rain and the water, he's growing it. Not your supernatural superhero powers. Yeah, not not your super smart but biblical knowledge. Exactly. Amen. All right. Um, Comment number two. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, Rudy Barlon, you want to do this one? Should I do it? Uh, go ahead. I kind of just talked a lot. so why don't Okay. You All good. All right. Rudy Barlon, Jeremiah 4, uh, 7 through 8. Verses. A lion has come out of his lair. A destroyer of nations has set out. He has left his place to lay waste your land. So put on sackcloth, lament, and wail, for the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned away from us. Verse 7 is a warning. The Israelites... Uh, verse 7 is warning the Israelites of the imminent destruction of their land. The destroyer of nations has set out. It's on its way to lay waste their land. But the destroyer can be stopped. It's not too late. Verse 8 gives the specifics on how to stop the destroyer. Put on sackcloth, lament, and wail. This reminds me of Jonah 3, verses 4 through 5, where Jonah told the people of Nineveh, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. Jonah did not tell them how they can avert the impending destruction of Nineveh, but the Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Jonah 3, five. And in Jonah verse 10, it says, When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. By believing, that Jonah, by believing what Jonah told them and doing something to avert it, they made Jonah look like a false prophet. What he told them did not happen. But actually, he was a successful prophet. The people to whom God sent him did exactly what God wanted to happen. What the Ninevites did is the same prescription Jeremiah told the Israelite. 
they could avert the destruction of their land by doing what Jeremiah told them in verse 7, put on sackcloth, lament, and wail. What I learned from this passage in Jeremiah, and with the help of Jonah, is that the purpose of a threat or a warning is to give the people a chance to avert the impending destruction or disaster. This is the purpose of the word of God. Every human being is given a chance to avert or escape the impending retribution from God because of our sins. As it says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can avert the wages of sin, which is death, by believing in the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. In John 3.18 it says, Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Yeshua HaMashiach is God's prescription for us to avert condemnation from God. Damn. Amen. Truth, brother. Truth right there. I yep. love it. <clears throat> Super awesome. Yep. Well said. Awesome stuff. Jeremiah 5, Rudy Barlon. Uh, go up and down the street of Jerusalem. Look around and consider. Search through the square. <clears throat> what is wrong with me today? I have frogs in my throat. You can find but one person who deals honestly and seek the truth. I will forgive this city. The verse reminds me of the passage in Genesis 8, 20 through 33, when Abraham pleaded for Sodom. For Sodom. Uh, Abraham started pleading for 50 righteous people, and the Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Solomon, I will separate the whole uh, place for their sake. I will spare the whole place for their sake. In the sake. city of Sodom. You said Solomon. Just making sure people, because they can't yeah. see the text. Sorry. Yeah. Rewind. I'm okay. Take two. If I find 50 people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham, uh, Abraham went on with his plea of what if decreasing the number of righteous people what if there's five less than 50 then he said i will not destroy the city Abraham continued his plea until he was down to 10 people and the lord answered the same for the sake of 10 i will not destroy it true enough besides abraham and his nephew lot and his family there weren't any righteous people in sodom and god destroyed the city in jeremiah 5 1 the lord challenged jeremiah to look for just one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth. It seems like Jeremiah knows that he could not find one. So he started making excuses for the people. He said, there are only the poor and they are foolish. And for, <clears throat> for they do not know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. Jeremiah suggested that he goes to their leaders thinking that they know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. But with one accord, they too had broken off the yoke and torn off the bonds. From, this, from the Sodom incident and the challenge to Jeremiah to look for one person who deals honestly, I see God's awesome patience and love with one honest person. God will forgive the whole city. But like what Romans 8.10 says, there is no one righteous, not even one. God could not find even one person who is righteous, so he could forgive not just a city, but the world. So God had to send the one and only righteous one to the world, so that through him the world will be saved. That righteousness was, that righteous one was Jesus, who was a, was born of a woman, but is called the Son of the Most High. Luke one thirty two. God has to provide for us the righteousness that he requires for salvation. Romans 3.22 says the righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all believers. God provided the solution to man's problem for damnation. We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that Christ came, that, that came by Jesus Christ. Romans 3.24, salvation is now freely available, but we have to avail ourselves of that salvation. As it says in Acts 16.31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. He is the righteous one that satisfies God's requirement to save the whole city world. Praise the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So awesome. Woo! Hallelujah. Well. All right. 
Next one, Sabrina. I got excited. I hit the space bar and my screen went nuts. Okay. You would. I you would. would I would. I bars. would. You're a space bar hitter sometimes. I am. I'm a, I smash that space bar. Okay. I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> Sabrina Gailas, uh, there weren't any righteous and good people anymore in that time because they have lied to the Lord and said, it is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine, because the prophets were speaking lies to the people instead of what Jehovah was saying. He brought this judgment upon them. Verse 23 and 25 says, but this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in this season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. He keeps repeating that it's because of their sins and own behavior and choices that this was going to happen. Jehovah wasn't pleased with having to do all of this at all. I believe he just didn't have another choice. His own people forced him to do this because otherwise it would have gone on and on and on like this, probably only getting worse than it already was. That's not what he wanted for them. He wanted so much for them to return to him so he could bless them again. That's also the case for all the people in the world today. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He gave the solution to our problem, Yeshua, his finished work on the cross and his resurrection. Hallelujah. I think we truly can't thank him enough. Yeah, you betcha, Sabrina. We truly can't thank him enough. I mean, we could spend the rest of our, the rest of eternity saying thank you, and I don't think it would be enough, honestly. Amen. And so, um, um, just to you know, I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler because I read ahead slightly and it literally talks about, I'm not going to say what it says, but if I'm you want to know, no, 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 I know, it's good. No, no. Uh, I know, I know, it's so cool. What I'm saying is, <laughs> yes, it is. in the next few chapters, it'll actually tell us, God will say what he's going to do, how he's going to deal with his feelings about what he has to do now with, yeah. with the Israelites. It talks about what he's going to do and he said, so what you said here is perfect when it says when, when you when you've said when you pointed out here he doesn't want to do this yeah he'll reiterate reiterate that in later chapters of Jeremiah and tell you exactly what he's going to be uh, doing it's just so awesome you know for God to use you know the, those human emotions that we have he doesn't deny them in himself does that make sense what I'm saying right now Meaning, like, he actually has, like, personal level feelings towards yeah. you. And it's personal. You and me. It's personal. It's personal like like it would be for your loved ones. Like, it's that level personal. So, he loves whoa. Us. It's whoa. Crazy. Whoa. Yeah. Maria says... I love how you explain all this more. The Bible gets very confusing sometimes. I lived most of my life denying him. It's been over, it's been about three years since I've accepted and let him come into my life and completely changed it around. The past year, I have uh, become so close, we have a relationship. I used to say around three years ago when I prayed, if you are listening or even there, <laughs> I think we've all said that. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I was having a conversation to my husband and I said, when I pray, I never say that I know he's there. I know he's listening and I trust him, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Uh, I know and feel a life difference when I walk alone versus letting him walk and take me to a more fulfilling life. And also I have to add this because children are beautiful and precious. My daughter is two years old and praise the Lord every day with music every day. It is the most precious thing to hear her praise and worship. She finally oh, got man. to Sunday school today. I love raising my children the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, that's a that's mic awesome. drop, baby. Woo! That's awesome, Maria. Thank you so much for sharing that. We're blessed to have you here. And by the way, Maria, it's not, I, I know you say, I love you. Uh, I love how you explain. Uh, but the wonderful thing is, is it's not necessarily Alex and I. We're reading the comments live of all our brothers and sisters who participate, just like you participated and left that wonderful comment. And that is so wonderful 
about uh, this fellowship is it's, it's not what two guys are saying or one guy is saying about the Bible or trying to share people. It's uh, an entire body of Christ coming together and fellowshipping and sharing what they experience, what they learn. And it is, it is so blessed to not only have so many people fellowshipping with us and making us all blessed by their participation, uh, but also what the Lord speaks through each and every one of us. So that there is no no chance of pride, may that be so, right? May there be no chance of pride, Amen, because, because we are all blessed by one another. Absolutely. I mean, look at these comments; they're just amazing. Um, mm. Jeremiah, just we're speaking them. I just want to yeah. make sure people know: just because we're speaking them doesn't mean that we're saying it. Uh, right. Not not that we're ashamed saying that we want to give credit to where credit is due. That's why we read the name before we we do, because you guys yeah. are doing such a great job. So praise the Lord for you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ricardo, you want to do the Ricardos? Yeah. Uh, this is 7, 21 through 26. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings onto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I then, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your father came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets daily, rising up early, sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hearkened their neck, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Wait. Because at first glance sounded confused. Leviticus and Deuteronomy set laws and manners uh, about burnt offerings and sacrifice. But after a proper reading, our father highlighted the first and most important, obey my voice and I will be your God and ye shall be my people and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well unto you. It is not about religious and ritual practices. Bingo, winning, that is for the atonement for not walking the way that he had commanded them to. <laughs> exactly. That is the trick. That is the thing most people do not get. It is to clean up the mess, not to prepare the righteousness, not to prepare the right way, the righteousness, the right way, the the, the, ble the, the being what the Lord has commanded you to do is to walk right in the first place, to hear and respond and surrender our ways to his ways. You continue to go on to say, Ricardo, it is like our father set a perfect meal on a perfect dish with a perfect table and that table was flipped over and rearranged all other ways as living a religious ritual life of asking before doing when Jehovah said do first as I say and you won't have to ask for anything this reminded me about for I desire mercy not sacrifice and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings and also reminded me about Isaiah 1 bring no more vain oblation incense is an abomination unto me the new moons and sabbath the callings of assemblies i cannot away with it is iniquity even the solemn meeting your new moons and your appointment feasts my soul hate it they are troubles unto me i am weary to bear them man this is so important footage guys or or, or uh, so important comments uh to to have ricardo word it in this way so many people take their intellectualism, take their knowledge of scripture, take their knowledge of the laws, and they think that in those laws, uh, it, it, you know, the sacrificing the temple laws and things like this, that in doing so, you're doing, you're gaining the blessing of the Lord. It's so important of what you're saying that it's to clean up the mess you've made by not doing what the Lord commanded you. It's grace that he gives the opportunity to the Israelites to do it this way. This definitely says to me, this is Ricardo again, thank our Father asked for relationship, not religion. Uh, the holy issues are not the same as salvation issues. That the best thing we must do as Yeshua's followers to celebrate him and praise him and give all the glory to him is to spread his good news, his love and mercy on the cross and making more disciples to find and feed as more lost sheep we can, 
that they may become also disciples that will find more sheep and so on and so on, kingdom building. How many microphones do we have? Can we drop? If I had a table of microphones, I'd drop it, probably Ricardo. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that was like a, like a, like a, you just took, I mean, not that one should ever do this as a substitute, but you did such a great job of cliff noting the Old and New Testament, like together, like piecing it together in, in a paragraph or two, uh, you know, some of the main points here that I'm just going to reiterate what you said, that in fact, all of the temple laws, everything beyond the Ten Commandments was how you deal with the cleanup of sin. How do you come back to the Lord after you have broken his commandments? What do we do to people and things? How do we clean up the mess? That's exactly right. It wasn't about, oh, you must kill this animal and praise me this way, and then I will give you great harvest. Right. No. Right. It was, you've already got the great harvest. You've got all my promises. You're going to have food that doesn't rot. You're going to live a great, wonderful, wealthy, peaceful life. You're going to have many children. You're going to be blessed in all ways, protected in all ways. Just follow my commandments, which was just the 10, really. And yes. then, and then yes. okay, I know you're going to mess up. I know you're not going to be perfect. I know you're going to have problems because you're human. So I love you. So here's what you can do to come back to me when you've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, how is that not merciful? You tell me. I don't know. You tell me it is, because I know it is. Michelle, <laughs> you ask, where may I read what Ricardo wrote? So the wonderful thing is at facebook.com forward slash Yeshua official. We post a graphic. So for this, uh, before every video. So we'll post it days before we actually do the video. So the graphic for this one would be Jeremiah 1 through 10. So it is currently, what, the 28th? of may uh yeah so i was around last week uh and you can go on to the timeline on truth me on yeshua network and you can look at that date uh whenever you're watching this video and you will see on that graphic that says got questions jeremiah 1 through 10 that's where everybody posts these comments and you'll be able to see ricardo's comment there and it's uh jeremiah 7 21 through chapter 7 so if you go through his comments that's the one he was leaving I just read amen I have to admit I have, I have to admit I have not I have not looked for the mic that has disappeared from my desk so I'm going to once again drop a pencil instead you know I got one we, job we give you, you 20,000 jobs 20,000 jobs and you can only do one it's alright it's fine <laughs> All right, uh, that was awesome. Sabrina, uh, seven, um, chapter 7, verses 22 and 23. Um, For I spake unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning bird offerings or sacrifices. But this thing I commanded them, saying, Obey my... Okay, same, same one. Uh, um, yes, obey my voice. I'll just read it. Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, and it may be well unto you. So what I love also about these, this particular statement is he says, Jehovah, the creator of all things, doesn't even define himself as I am the God or I, a God, right? He says, I will be your God, meaning I'll even play a role of being just your God, where all the other nations have their gods, mm -hmm. I'm going to be yours. Meaning the creator of all things is going to actually lower himself for the sake of Israel to be their God. Yeah, you amazing. know what I'm saying? Like the word God is below Jehovah. The, yeah. word, the word God is almost, almost, uh, forgive me, it's almost dirty compared to yeah. the magnificence and Obvious. righteousness and goodness of Jehovah. Yeah, my brother, I agree. So anyway, um, this made me think about David, what David wrote in Psalm. 51 15 through 16 you do not delight in sacrifice or i would bring it you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart O god you will not despise and it's also in hosea 6 6 i don't want your sacrifices i want your love i don't want your offerings i want you to know me and it's also in other books in the bible he says it again and again 
He wants people to know him, to follow his ways because his ways are righteous and just. It's about loving others as yourself. Spread the love and his light toward others. Verse 726 says, Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. So sad that they didn't listen to him and his word, that they were even worse than the previous generations. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they were they were chosen to be the the ones that get to call the creator of all things God. God. Yeah. And he promised to respond to them as if he was indeed their God, as opposed to all the other nations who prayed to little idols and got zero response. Or they got some, who knows what kind of response they got and from what. Let's not even get into that concept, but, you know, I mean, mind blown. No, true story right there. True story. So bring you guys chapter 8. In this verse, Jeremiah is grieving for the people, his own people. How awful must it have been for him to be surrounded with all this evil and wickedness that those people did? I can relate to him in a way. I feel grieved, frustrated, and sad too at times when I look around me to the people I know in my life every day, uh, everyday life. Seeing them doing uh, their own thing, not following a show his way, not reading the Bible for themselves, not knowing it personally. So again, Really grateful and happy that I came to know all of you amazing people and have family here on the Shua Network. Shua's network of people, hallelujah. It's especially hard when I have talked to them about him. Mm. Anybody on this video relate to that? It's especially hard when I have talked to them about him, sharing my testimony, and even when they got healed on the spot when I prayed for them by laying on my hands. So they have proof that he is who he says he is. That is all real and true, but still they go on with their own lives. I don't see that they are changing their ways, like searching him more, like into him more to find out the truth and the whole truth. Start reading the Bible so they will know the truth for themselves. That's how I feel sometimes. But at the other hand, I also know that I have planted a seed inside them. And I believe that this seed will grow after time. Some people plant the seeds, others will gather the harvest. There is a right time for these things. Amen, sister. I'm so glad that you went there, Sabrina. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bring it a full circle. She continues. He who has started a good work in somebody is going to finish it to the completion, according to Philippians 1. I am trusting in the Lord for this to happen, but still... It's hard sometimes when I'm working and living with these people and don't see any difference yet. I have to practice to have patience in these things. And of course, I love them anyways. Jesse responds and says, absolutely agree. And I know this feeling, pain slash sadness, but we press on and continue on the path of our Father has called each of us to do until our last breath, all of for his glory. Let me just add something, Sabrina, and anybody else who's experiencing this. Our patience, why we suffer the desire for our brothers, our sisters, our family, our friends to come on to the Lord, to be closer to the Lord, to grow into the Lord, is so that we have a better understanding of his suffering for us. If we didn't experience that for our loved ones and those around us, we would not have the slightest inkling of an understanding of what he suffers for us to come around and wake up. And get right and walk better with him and also for as much angst as you might have we might have sabrina i'm not throwing you under the bus here because i don't know your walk but what i'm saying is as much angst as we have it is a fraction of a fraction of the angst that god has with us yes even us now as we walk with the lord even now as we read the bible for ourselves even now as we do our best to surrender our day to day today. He's still sitting there going, Lord, you got a long way to go. You can do more. So so it's important for us to know that the angst is a blessing for us because the angst we feel for others is our own conviction to make sure that we do right or so, that we seek our own path or so. So let that angst exist. Let that angst be in your heart. Let that angst be upon you. And as you show grace unto those, and you show patience unto those, realize that the patience being shown unto you is 
magnified, mag, what's the word I'm looking for, Alex? Multiplied. Ma multiplied. I was trying to put yeah. some words <laughs> even more for you. Yes, even for you. Let us never forget that that angst on the other side and that desire on the other side is always there. No matter how good we get, no matter how righteous, no matter what good things we do, there's always the angst for us to do better and to serve more and to spread more. Not that it's a bad thing, but for us to understand the blessing of it and to know that you wouldn't be having the angst for a brother, a sister, a family, a friend if it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Nobody has an angst for people to be closer to God naturally. The reason you have it is because you're experiencing what the Holy Spirit is experiencing for them. And God just wants you to know if you feel it, it's because he feels it too. If you want them to grow closer to him, it's because he wants them to grow closer to him. So you know that the Lord is with them. You know because God is calling you to have that angst so that you can pray, so that you can intercede, so that you can fast for them. You can offer them up. You can just pray for the Holy Spirit to work in them. If you weren't there to feel that angst, who would they have to intercede and pray for them? So it's a blessing. I know it's frustrating. I know it sucks. I know it hurts. I know it's heartbreaking. As, as Jesse said, it's sad and painful. But don't see it as sad and painful. See it as hope. Paul talks about that. We have hope that our brothers and sisters are going to be completed. Philippians 1 6, it's a hope. It's a promise. That's this is our mindset must change from one where this is broken and we need to have anxiety to one going, oh my gosh, it's a good thing I have this angst. It's a good thing I have this pain because it's proof to me that God cares about them too. Because you wouldn't have it if God didn't have it already. Amen. Amen, dude. That was great. All of this, you know, is making me reflect a little bit on the on the enormous, like, mind-blowing humility of God, of Jehovah. Right. The one, the one who has created and controls absolutely everything whenever it is that he pleases, right? Whatever. Has allowed for this, this world to exist in which he will not take up the reins to fix all problems immediately. He will allow us to do all of the things that are cause, going to cause him all of the pain. Because as Nathan's pointing out, if you feel the angst, he feels it way more. If you feel the pain and sorrow, he feels it way more. I can, I can testify to having received a glimpse of the enormous amount of, of just a massive pool, an infinite pool of sorrow that the Lord feels for his children, us on earth, for all of the things that have transpired, right? But, so, to knowingly go into that situation, and then to knowingly do the whole Yeshua thing. I mean, come on, guys. The humility of God is beyond comprehension. Amen. Only someone with all power can... can... I, I'm, I'm rendered speechless because I can no longer... This is too much for my brain to process. Oh, yeah. Yes, um, if, if it, I just want to say too is that the best chance that those around you have that you love and care for, for them to get, you know, in the sense of the Holy Spirit is obviously working in them. But the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do to bless them is to make sure that you are walking and growing closer and being right with the Lord as much as possible. And we're all together working on that. We're all together individually working on our own walks and getting closer to God. But I'm saying be of good cheer, brothers and sisters, that as you do grow closer, whether you perceive it or whether you don't, just as, as, as our sister uh, Sabrina said, she knows she's planting seeds. But the more that you do, right, we, we humans care more about what than what a person says. And as they watch you, they don't, it doesn't matter if you come to them and you regurgitate the Bible and you quote the Bible and you master your theology and you can tell them every law and every blessing and da 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 in the Bible and lay on hands and heal them. Honestly, it doesn't necessarily matter to, to the normal Joe. What matters is how changed are you? How much growth are you growing? How much are you dedicated? And then they will become inspired and say, I want that too. That is how God designed us. That is how we work. So 
So Yeshua being the first, as the Bible says, perfect. And we all go, man, that would be awesome to have that kind of relationship. And then he goes, you can't. Just follow me. And then the apostles were the next group. And we're like, dang, that's pretty awesome. If we could have been an apostle, I could have been there and walked with somebody. So what if? Well, you are. You are. You can be an apostle today. You can be surrendered to the utmost and, and, and to give all over. And, and if, if you do, if you continue to allow God to grow you and move in that way, you will, you will be planting more seeds in your right choice making and your right walking with the Lord than your words or your or your uh, uh, witnessing or your articulation, like your, your quoting of the Bible will ever do, ever do. So, so yeah, hopefully that speaks to somebody as well. Amen. Amen. Where, verse 9 or chapter yep. 9? Jeremiah chapter 9, Karen Del Cunningham. Oh. Thus, says the, thus says the Lord, let not the one who is wise and skillful boast in his insight. Let not the one who is mighty and powerful boast in his strength. Let not the one who is rich boast in his temporal satisfactions and earthly abundance. This is added in brackets, temporal satisfactions and earthly abundance. But let, not, let the one who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am Jehovah who practices loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. I mean, there it is, you guys. What have we been talking about this whole, this whole video? I mean, it all boils down to, a, to that right there. Mm -hmm. What you guys have all said and, and, you know, all your comments have been moving all in that direction. Jeremiah 9, 8, 23-24. If we boast about anything, it can only be in him and that and what he's done. If we love God, it's because he first loved us. If we have understanding to seek and know him, the Holy Spirit kindly gave us that understanding. Any good thing in our life, skills, talent, wisdom, they all come from his grace. To not waver from knowing that he is righteous and just and kind without doubting no matter what circumstances I face is what I pray he creates in me. My confidence, my confidence must be in his ability to keep me, as I have no confidence whatsoever in myself to remain faithful through extremely tough or painful times. I believe he is able, and I choose to trust him. Really? Amen. Amen, Karen. That's beautiful. Come on. That's Come beautiful. on, sister. Preach it. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. And let me just add real quick. You tell that enemy, the devil, to shut up when he says that you cannot receive God's grace, that you cannot receive God's growth, that you cannot receive God's blessing because you are too wicked, too broken, too downtrodden, too too much history and past of your nastiness. That is a lie of the devil. So while we trust in the Lord, we often add in a but. Oh, Lord, I trust you can walk on water. I trust you can make people walk on water. I trust you can raise the dead. I trust you can change people. But me, I'm kind of too broken. I am too far away. I'm too sinful. I have too big a struggles. I have too many temptations. And if you just surrender that moment to moment to moment, this, this is where the miracles happen. Having a plan, having the objective to, to, to say, I'm going to do or thinking, you know, this and that. Yeah, the devil's going to say, well, you're never going to accomplish that. This might be a time where the devil is saying the truth. You won't. But where he's lying, the part he's leaving out is God will. And not only that, but God promises he will and he wants to if so much as all we do is step out of the way. So much as all we do is step out of our way, meaning that we take all the ways we want to do and we stop doing them and we just do what he wants to do, right? Moment to moment to moment. And as we grow and as we improve and as we do, the Holy Spirit and his power comes into us more and more and more. So just throwing it out there. Because I get the emails, I see the comments on the posts throughout the ministry of Yeshua Network here. You tell that big lying worm, the devil, that he is a liar and that has nothing to do with your past or your sins or where you're at right now. Because the Lord is saying, if they just repent, if they just clean themselves up, if they just start right this second, right this very second, if they just start right now, whatever day you're watching this, and they walk with me, 
I will be their God. I will be their Lord. I will be all these things, lovingness, justice, righteousness on earth in them. So, yeah, just encouraging anybody. Amen. And, and, you know, just we're now reading about the time where the punishment came and there was no there was no way back. But there were plenty of times in Kings and Chronicles we've read through where it got pretty darn close to this and the people got together and the people repented and the sackcloth came and the righteous priest came and the righteous king came and things were turned around and God was with them again. So they had come close to this sort of disaster on several occasions and the wrath was turned back exactly in what Nathan's saying. It didn't undo the child sacrifices that they may have engaged in. It didn't undo all the totem poles and all the nonsense that they may have prayed for. It didn't un make that all go away and disappear, but it, it was washed clean, as he says. It was washed clean. He allowed it to be as if it didn't exist. For a new start. For a new start, for the sake of, a, of, the, for the sake of relationship, just like uh, we have with our loved ones and our best friends and our husbands and our wives. Something may go wrong at one point, and then there's a moment of forgiveness, there's a moment of reconciliation, there's a desire that it's better together, regardless of past mistakes, than apart. And that's what the Lord was willing to give to Israel at that time, I believe still is, willing to give to all of us. Yep, amen. That it's better together than apart. And, I mean, come on. That's a unbelievable love. Yeah. And what did Paul say? I am made new every day. Yeah. Every day. We, we can be a better version by stepping out of the way every day. We can improve every day. Amen. Amen. All right. Ricardo, that's for you, good sir. You want to read Ricardo's? Yeah. Um, oh, you read, you read Karen. Yeah, I yeah, read yeah, go for it. Okay, my bad. My bad. Karen, well said, by the way. <laughs> yes. Susan says, Will you hit the bullseye. Devil, shut up. No more tapes of my past. Christ in me, let the hope and glory, his glory. Amen. Amen. Guys, don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let the devil keep you down. Don't let the devil say to your mind, you can't make today a day where you're right with the Lord. You can, and you should. And God is saying, please do so. Ricardo, Jeremiah 9, 13 through 14. And the Lord said, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walk therein, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after Baal, uh, which their fathers taught them. The word law here, actually the word Torah, yep. and being Yeshua, our father's voice, and the whole Bible, our Torah. I can't help to read this again as a mere situation on today's world and religious practices. Question, can you explain your point of view about the term spirit of religion? Uh, spirit of religion, uh, well, Sabrina writes, so let me read her first. I believe that this is an actual evil spirit that is called this and is present in other religions because Satan wants us to divide us as believers from the inside in churches, quote, unquote, causes division in beliefs so he can, in beliefs, I think she means beliefs, so that he can try us as much as he can to put our gaze towards something that looks like the real deal but actually isn't. He wants people to think that they are following the right path, but in reality, they aren't. Religion has everything to do with following rules, rituals, and things like that. But there is no personal experience and personal relationship with our Lord, the only right and true living one in that matter. Sabrina nailed it. I don't think I need to add anything else. It has everything to do with, with, with ritual and practices rather than relationship with the actual source. Yeah. Nail on I mean, they're just saying, yeah, yeah. Move to the right, move to the left. Nod three times, the Lord will bless you. Right. Huh? If right. I was a non-believer and that's what I got, then I would continue being a non-believer and be proud of it. Yep, exactly. That's how nasty the spirit of religion is. And, and you would trust in it to have saved you and to make you right and, and, and right in the eyes of God. And you would say, exactly. I am right in the eyes of God because I have done A, B, C, up, right, down, down, left, right, select, pause. You know what I mean? It doesn't work that way. Right, exactly. No, I, 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 I felt more, uh, when I was not a believer necessarily, I, I believed that there was a God, but I, I didn't know who. I didn't know anything about him. But when I was, when I would see religion 
and it looked to me as turn to the left, turn to the right, not three times, you're blessed. I would immediately say, I am more righteous than these people, even though I do nothing and I don't know who God is. Because it because it felt so weird. And just, how can the creator of, how can the, the Lord of justice, something, you, know, you just assume that, anyway, I'm sorry. I got, I got, I, I went too, I went, I went, I went into a subject that I could probably talk about for way too long. So we're going to move on. You get what I'm saying. The spirit of religion sucks. Okay. It does. I'm going to agree. It does. With yeah. That's, we could just leave it at that. You guys are all on that. You guys are all on the same page about that. So Ricardo, Jeremiah 9 verses 23 through 26. Now this is definitely a message from our father through Jeremiah unto this days we are living. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let them that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish them, punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Egypt and Judah and Edom, the children of Ammon and Moab, and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are, are, are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. That's again pointing out that it's not your circumcision that makes you holy and righteous to walk with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Saying Israel is uncircumcised in the heart. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Amen. So bring to Gilus 924, but let him that glorieth, or that glorieth glory. Is that right? But let him that glorieth glory in this. Oh, yes. Okay, got it. Let, let okay. it yeah, him that glory. Yeah. Yeah. Let him who glorieth glory in this, that he understands and knoweth me that I am the Lord, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord, this word glorious can be translated to boast, to celebrate, give light, sing, and praise. I have wanted to share this verse so everyone can hear it, because to me it's such a beautiful one. He deserves all the glory, honor, and worship. We aren't to boast on ourselves when we have wisdom, re re revelation, and other things. It comes from Him. So I want to say thank you, Abba, for everything you have given me in the past what you give today and what you are going to give me in the future. Thank you that you have changed things in my life that caused me to come back to you. Oh, oh, hallelujah. You continue to say to really get to know you and the whole truth. I thank him every day for all this. He is so amazing. Couldn't agree more, sister. Amen. Couldn't agree more. And I'm so grateful that he won he, well, he hasn't seemed to give it up on, on us and some of us, you know, maybe kind of deserve to be given up on, but he doesn't give up on us. He continues to love us with this unbelievable God level grace and mercy. And he continues to, to move in us and draw us onto him and push us and grow in him. It's just like, wow, 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 wow. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. I mean, all of the blessings of my life, everyone. I can look to and say, I didn't do that. Yeah, exactly. Me too. I can't take credit for any of it. No. Sure, there are things I was compelled to do here and there, but if, but you know. But if you weren't compelled to do it, you wouldn't have gotten the blessing of it. Exactly. So, like, it's just, you're, you know, come on. The Lord is weaving the tapestry of a most incredible, ridiculously awesome design. Yes. Amen, brother. Well, well worded. I like that. He is weaving the tapestries of our life and painting an amazing picture of his glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Which we get to be a thread in that tapestry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're, we're, the, we're the little string. We're Each not even us. worthy enough to be that string in that tapestry, yet he uses us yes. to weave his brilliance and glory. Yeah. I mean, is there any part of God that when you stop and really meditate, and be still on it and think about it that doesn't blow your mind? Is there any part of God where you're just like, <laughs> where you're not like that? It's unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Neuron scrambling. 
Exactly. That's a good way of working. <laughs> no problem. Scrambling. Yeah. Scrambled egg in the head right now. Yeah, Scrambled. totally. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, brother. Uh, is it Ricardo? Yes. Yep. 10. Okay. Ricardo, Jeremiah 10, 2 and 4. Through five, uh, thus saith the Lord: Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of a forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, and they move it, and it that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must. They must needs be born, because they cannot move them, so they cannot go, they cannot move themselves. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. At first I read signs of heaven as looking at the stars and moon and people prophesying about that, but reading the context, the word sign in Hebrew is the same word as used for, as token in Cain's exile situation. So it seems like signs of heaven is here referencing references idols that represented that like a complete disobedience to exodus 20 verse 4 thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of any kind of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth and when it says they must needs be born because they cannot go that reminded me of religious processions crowds of people following an image that is being carried <laughs> hmm thinking face yeah ricardo yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I could see the you know signs of heaven as being, for example, astrology. Uh, you know, there's 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 it, astrology. Just just really quick as a total aside is a very uh, um, seductive thing because um, we are very complex beings, right? And if somebody tells you you have certain traits you will most certainly find those traits in yourself, especially if they're flattering, right? Mm -hmm. um, so astrology has a way of uh, easily being able to penetrate into our minds because we have the traits of all the things that are being taught. Everybody's felt A, B, or C at every, at every which point in their life, at some point in their life. So um, that's kind of like the false, that is like the false idolatry that he's talking about. We are projecting onto a, idol and stupid carving projecting a deity that doesn't exist only exists in our minds and that projection the lord's witnessing us do this he's here the creator of all things and we're playing with make-believe uh friends we just created in our minds you know <laughs> exactly i mean like it's so like oh right it kind of makes sense why i was scared now when kids did make-believe when i was a kid I, it freaked me out scared the bejeez out of me it must have been the holy spirit showing me of uh of, of kind of the uh the strangeness of how adults later when they yeah. make believe that something is their god or something is their guide in life you know what i right. mean it's interesting right. you, said, you brought me back to when i was a kid and kids used to play house and they would drink fake tea and eat fake muffins and i was like why not just drink tea and eat real muffins? Like, why is it all plastic? <laughs> like, I literally thought they were crazy. And and I was, I know, I'm four or five years old, and I'm scared to death of these peoples yeah. because they're fake eating a muffin that's made of plastic. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I'm sure that, you know, now as you say it, I'm like, I could see God doing the same thing with us. Like, I made the tree, you cut down the tree, you put the tree back up in your living room, you decorated with gold and then you worshiped it. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. What in the world is happening yeah. here? Yeah. Did did I say something to you that I forgot? Yeah. Did you hear me say this? Yeah. When did this get confusing for you that you're worshiping the tree from the forest in your living room rather than the one who created the forest? Yeah. What what signal got crossed here? Who wrote you this memo? Because it wasn't me. I mean, it, it comes. It almost comes down to this, you know. Human beings won't humble themselves enough to go talk to the real Creator of all things. It requires a significant amount of humbling. We all know that, right? We, those of us that have experienced it, know it. Human beings won't humble themselves, but they have a giant hole in their hearts. Going, where's my God? Where's well, who do I need to talk to someone? So they they simply fill that hole with a with a trinket. Mm. You know, like, I, you know I, 
Instead, of, I, I'm too proud to humble myself and say, God, I need you. I'm broken. I need you. I need you. I can't do this. This is too hard. I'm too humble to say it. So you mean I'm prideful? Going, huh? You mean too prideful to I'm say sorry, it? I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm too prideful. That's what I meant. I'm too yeah. prideful to say it. I have too much pride to be able to humble myself enough to say that truly in my heart. So I'm going to fill that hole and to give myself confidence that there is some powerful being with me. I'm going to create this idol. I mean, sucks, but that's what it is. It's, it's, it's another, it's another sin born in pride. Yes, it is. It's crazy. Uh, last one, Ricardo, Jeremiah 10, 15 about idols and images. They are vanity and the work of heirs in the time of their visitation, they shall perish. Uh, different words, but same message about this, Zechariah 13, 2. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land. They shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. P.S. Can't wait to get onto Zechariah and EBRT. <laughs> yeah, Zechariah's going to be great. great. Many great passages to come and many great books. Hallelujah. All right. You guys, you're a blessing. Thank you for allowing us to take two videos on Jeremiah uh, on these 10 videos. A super blessed thing. And also, uh, thank you for those who are participating also in the 40 day challenge, uh, the holy challenge. Uh, I see uh, Dina says, Good morning, Nate and Alex and EBRT family. Sorry, can't stay. Is have to leave for work. It's okay. You only missed one more comment. I uh, just finished watching the 40 day holy challenge video and ready to fight the good fight. We'll definitely be stalking myself like a lion today, a little nervous uh, of what might be brought to light. Have a blessed week, everyone, and love you all. I think that's a great, a great passage or a great comment to read uh, as we end this because you are all such a blessing and, uh, and may you all be blessed in that way and go out and pursue this holiness. I hope you guys participate in the 40 day when you're ready. But I hope you do participate. I hope that it will be a blessing. I know I'm super excited about it. And yes, it is a challenge. It is definitely a challenge. Amen. Oh, sorry. My arm hurts. Amen. Yeah, got anything to add? I don't want to interrupt you. Sorry. No, 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 no. I think it's wonderful, awesome to fellowship with everybody again and uh, love it you is. guys and looking forward to next week already. Amen. So, so. Jeremiah 11 through uh, 20. Mm -hmm. 11 to 20 that is what we're doing so be Read blessed it. what you bless it you comment on it and we all get your blessed from it okay and we will see you at the meetup not within the next week but we'll see you at the meetup just always want to remind you guys meet up 26 27th of june washington dc hope you will be there because you bless us very much washington dc i didn't get the memo at the nation's capital Yes, we're going to bless it and the peoples and everybody who are there and we will do the baptisms and the Holy Spirit will come and be with us and it will be amazing. Hallelujah. I'm excited. This sounds really cool. Yeah. And there's a sign up. There's a sign up dealing dealing. So go to the top of Yeshua official on Facebook. You will see the uh, dates pinned to the top with a post and you will see the sign up sheet. Please sign up so that we know. Uh, how many people to expect and we can make proper arrangements to suit everybody okay appreciate that all very much thank Amen. you guys be blessed be the blessing talk to you soon